Mike from the box from Astra. Registration Delta 904, November, Whiskey November. Occupant, IC1, male, failed to stop at an RTA. What happened, Tony? Well, the witness said that she just strapped the son into the car. She was on her way round to get into the driver's side and the Astra just hit her. Didn't stop? No. Witness said didn't even attempt to swerve. Do we know she is? Yeah, Rebecca Wild. And a purse in a coat from right in front of her son. Is he all right? Yeah, he's over here. Thought it was the safest place to leave him in the car until the ambulance arrives. Poor kid. Yeah. All right, Tony. Sorry. Best stay here, fill in your ALB and wait for the trap hole, right? Sarge, we're going to speak to the husband. All right, see you later. I won't go any further unless you want to get stuck. Thanks. Can I help you? Yeah. We're looking for a Mark Wild. I'm Mark Wild. What can I do for you? Right, you're the owner of a red Volvo registration C601 GWN. Yeah, well, it's my wife's car, am I? Well, I'm afraid there's been an accident. How bad is it? Well, your wife's been taken to hospital. What about my son? He's fine. He wasn't involved in the accident. Well, they're both down at St. News. We're going there, so if you want to lift. Oh, thanks. Where's my son? Where's Jamie? He's all right. Uh, the nurse is looking up. Uh, your wife's in A&E. Oh. Where is she? She's still unconscious. If you want to have a word with the nurse, she's just through there. Right. Doesn't seem too concerned about the wife, does he? They're separated. He's been telling us all about it on the way down here. He's been giving me a earache. They're fighting over custody. He thinks his wife should give up work to stay at home and look after the kid. Maybe he's right. What's the point of having kids if you're not prepared to stay at home and look after them? It's not necessary, is it, Tone? Not in this day and age. Yeah, well, it's none of our business. How'd you get on with the doctor? What the hell's going on? What's the matter? I don't know who that woman is, but it's not my wife. What? You sure? Of course I'm sure. I might be stupid, but I'm not that stupid. I think I might recognise my own wife. I mean, are you sure you got the right bed? Yes! There's only one woman in there. You've got the name right, but that is not my wife. Who is she, then? I don't know. Never seen her before in my life. Eh. Well, she was driving your car. Oh, my God, you're all right. Yeah. You're glad to see Daddy? She was carrying your wife's purse. She had your son. Well, she could be anybody. I'm going to find out what this is all about. Tony, you better stay here. Paul. You should be doing. Looking after my son. Where's Susan? Rebecca Wild. Yes. Who the hell's Susan? Sergeant Boyd, WPC Post Sunhill. Can we come in, please? Is Susan the young woman who picked your son up from nursery in Gatley Road? Yes, why? Who is she? And what's she doing picking him up from the nursery? She's a nanny. What's happened? She's been involved in an accident, I'm afraid. Is she all right? Well, she's in intensive care at St. Hughes. Oh, God, no. Well, what do you need a nanny for? Don't start, Mark. Can we take some details, please? Sierra Oscar from 408 receiving. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, can you confirm the index of the Astra involved in the RTA in Gatley Road? It was Delta 904, November Whiskey, November. Received. Yeah, it looks like the traffic warden was right. I'm outside a hi-fi shop now. I'm just going to go in and see if anyone saw anything. Susan Webster. She lives with her parents in Frithwell Gardens. Number 15, I think. Terry Webster's sister? Yeah, I think one of her brothers is called Terry. You know them? Carl and Terry Webster. Yeah, I know them. I know they've been in trouble with the police. Susan told me. What sort of trouble? Well, let's put it this way. I will buy a second-hand car off them. These are the people you've had looking after Jamie? No, Susan's been looking after him, not her brothers. And she's not like that. She's a nice girl. <laughs> Reliable. Do you know why she had your purse on her? Well, she was wearing my coat. She was driving my car. Well, what do you expect her to do? Bring him home on the bus? It looked like it might rain. I told her to grab a coat from the hall. My purse must have been in the pocket. She shouldn't have been bringing him home at all. That's your responsibility. You haven't been so busy working. Oh, don't start that again. Just 
just as well. I am working. And what's that supposed to mean? It means half the money you took out of the joint account yesterday is mine. That money's supposed to be for the mortgage. We agreed not to touch it. This isn't the time or the place. Well, obviously, you've got a lot to talk about. We'll be outside. Is anyone else, sir? No. What about the driver? He didn't stop. Hey, go ahead, Sosh. We've got a name for the woman involved in the RTA in Gatney Road. Her name's Susan Webster, 1515 Frithwall Gardens. Carl and Terry Webster's sister. Yeah, uh, receive. All right, yeah, cheers. Bye-bye, then. Sierra Oscar from 408 receiving. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I've just left the hi-fi shop in Cheswick Street, Gary. I'm on my way back in. I think I might have something that'll interest Sergeant Boyden. Terry. Terry, hold on. What do you want? Do you have a word? You got a warrant? Look, it's not that sort of visit. Social call, is it? It's about your sister, Susan. Yeah, what about her? What's going on? Sue. Look, this is not the sort of thing you want to hear on the doorstep. She'll go in. All right. What is it? Susan was involved in a road traffic accident. She was knocked down. She's at St Hughes. How bad is it? It's pretty bad. She's in intensive care. Panda's outside if you want to live to the hospital. It's all right. We'll make our own way down there. We'll have to pick up our mum on the way. Fair enough. Sorry. Who it, huh? We don't know yet. You didn't stop. Sergeant Cry remembers booking him in about 12 months ago, but he can't put a name to the face. He seems to think you were the arresting officer. Go back a bit. Ah, oh, Sarge, this is the security video from the hi-fi shop in Cheswick Street. As you can see, it's trained on the door, so you can see the street clearly. Stop it there. Ronald Keegan. Oh, I know Keegan. He's got a record as long as your arm. Robbery GBH. Well, now he runs a security company. It's just a front for a protection racket. Building sites, mainly. He sends in the vandals, then offers the site protection. If you don't use his security company, then the vandals just keep coming back. Any idea where I might find him? Check the custody record. I seem to remember him operating out of a pub. The DIO will know. Cheers, Alice. Thanks, Arch. What would Keegan have against a 22-year-old nanny? Maybe nothing. But he might have something against her nearest and dearest. Only one way to find out. Ask him. Mr. Keegan. Yeah. Sergeant Boyd, WPC Page, Sun Hill. We're investigating an incident that happened earlier today. We thought you might be able to help us. Well, it just shows you how wrong you can be, doesn't it? Same again with you, mate. What car do you drive, Mr. Keegan? <sighs> Jack. Wouldn't drive anything else. No other vehicle? No. So you haven't been driving a white Vauxhall Astra recently? <laughs> <laughs> nah. What is this? A white Vauxhall Astra was found abandoned this afternoon, outside a hi fi shop in Cheswick Street. Fortunately for us, the driver was caught on the security camera inside the shop. We didn't pull your name out the at, you know. Look, it was an accident. She stepped right out in front of me. There's nothing I can do. A lot of money to be carrying around, isn't it? How much is there? Two grand. It's me savings. What's wrong with the bank or the building society? People rob banks and building societies. You mean people like you? All right, lads. Mrs. Webster. Ah, oh, Susan. There's no change. The doctor's with her now. We caught the driver of the car, yeah. 
Someone's helping us with our inquiries, you? Who? I'm afraid I can't tell you that. That's my little sister in there. Yeah. And you're getting carried away and doing something stupid isn't going to help her. We'll find out. You admit taking the car, then? Yeah. A white fox Astra, registration D904NWN. Yeah. Where'd you take it from? The multi-storey car park in the high street. I was on my way home last night, been out on a piss. It was easier to nick the car than try and get a cab. How come she was still driving at lunchtime, then? I was going to damp it. What have you got against Susan Webster? Who? The young woman who you knocked down. I don't have anything against her. It was an accident. What about her brothers, Carl and Terry? What about them? You know them? No. What, they don't owe you money or anything? I just told you I don't know them. Well, that's a bit odd. A pair of villains like the Websters. I thought you'd know all the low life in Sun Hill. Look, it was an accident. I nicked the car, I left the scene of an accident, I was driving without insurance. I admit it. So if I charge me, I let me go. Yeah, well, it's not that simple. We think Susan Webster was deliberately knocked down. And we're going to find out why. So it's not a matter of TDA or driving without insurance. It'll be attempted murder. Sarge. We spoke to Susan Webster's last employer in the agency she works for. Yeah, and they both said exactly the same thing. She's a decent, hard-working girl. Hasn't got an enemy in the world. Yeah, so maybe it was an accident, like Keegan said. Or maybe made the same mistake as us. Got the wrong woman. Paul. Uh, me? What makes you think it was after me? Susan was wearing your coat and she was driving your car. You do look quite similar from a distance. He could have easily mistaken Susan for you. So he made a mistake. That still doesn't explain why he was after me in the first place. We think he runs a protection racket. Extorting money from local builders. Mark? You mean he's been trying to get money out of Mark? It's possible. <sighs> and he didn't tell me. He could have warned me. If this bloke's trying to get money out of Mark, why is he after me? Why doesn't he just try knocking Mark down, do us all a favour? Well, if he did that, he wouldn't get the money. Earlier you said your husband would take money out of your joint account. How much? Why? The man we arrested had a large sum of money on him. He took out £4,000. Mr Wilde? Can we have a word? Might give you a minute. Yeah, what is it? We've arrested the man that knocked down Susan Webster. Oh? His name's Ronald Keegan. Did he say it was an accident? The name doesn't mean anything to you, then? No. Was it an accident? So, he says. But we have reason to believe he's running a protection racket, demanding money from building sites like these. Do you know him? No. Are you sure? Yeah, of course I am. We've been to see your wife, Mr Wilde. She told us about the money you've taken out of your joint account. So? It's as much my money as it is hers. I don't see what my personal finances have got to do with you. Ronald Keegan had £2,000 on him when we arrested him. Did some work for me on site. Security work. Why, well, he offered to protect the site against vandals? Yeah. Did he threaten you? No. I left the gun late as it is. Look, there's no need to be scared. Keegan's under lock and key in Sun Hill. Yeah, battle long for. Well, that's up to you. If he's been demanding money with menaces and you make a statement, we can do something about it. I'm sorry, but you've seen what that man's capable of. Yeah, but your statement was showing sense. I could help prove what happened this morning wasn't an accident. Exactly. If any of that woman a couple of seconds earlier, before she put Jamie at the back of the car, it'd be my son lying in the hospital fighting for his life. Any money I gave to Keegan was for genuine security work. I did some work for him. Security work. It's all legit and above board. Got invoices to prove it. <laughs> you must think I was born yesterday. So he told you he gave me some money, so what? How much does he owe you? Why are you asking me? You've just spoken to him. If he wanted you to know, he'd have told you. If he don't want you to know, I can't tell you. It's confidential. What's this got to do with the accident? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. Well, you're wasting your time. 
You're wasting my time. It's all right for you. You get paid for sitting on your ass all day. I don't. Mr. Keegan's asked to see a solicitor, Sarge. Right. Still got me two grand. Don't worry, I ain't spent it yet. Come on. How much longer are you going to keep him? Why, what's from? Well, nothing, but he's admitted it, hasn't he? He's admitted the TDA and driving without insurance. But he's still saying what happened to Susan Webster was an accident. And I'm not sure it was. Do you want to keep him a bit longer? Until I make further inquiries, yeah. Yeah, all right. Suppose it was worth a try, Sarge. We told him we knew Wilde had given him the money. Well, I hope you think that Wilde had made a statement. I told you more than he actually did. Yeah. He's a bit long in the tooth to fork for that one, isn't he? Either that, or he knows Mark Wilde better than we thought. Maybe they both know each other better than we thought. Hey? We're assuming Keegan tried to knock down Rebecca because of the protection money. Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? Well, Keegan's already had two grand out of him. Why would he take that and try and knock her down anyway? Well, he might, if Wilde only gave him half. Rebecca did say her husband got four grand out of their account. Exactly. Why take out four grand and only give him two? Unless he was going to give him half now and half later when the job was done. What, you reckon Wilde hired Keegan to kill his wife? Well, explain why he only had half the money on him. So what happened to Susan Webster was an accident then, but only because Keegan tried to kill the wrong woman. All right, all right. Still good view from up here, aren't you? Why not? Can you try and keep it brief? Hello, Susan. Do you see Tony Stamp, Sunhill? Do you feel up to answering a few questions? Could you give us a minute, lads? It's all right. Thanks. Won't take a minute. You seen Jamie? He's fine. He's with his mum. Do you remember what happened? I saw a white car coming straight at me. I just froze. That's all I can remember. You didn't see the driver? No, sorry. Susan, can you think of any reason why someone would deliberately try and run you down? No. You've never been threatened? Anyone your brothers might have upset? I don't have a lot to do with my brother's friends. I can't see why any of them would be interested in me. There's another possibility. If the driver wasn't after you, could he have been after Rebecca? Rebecca? No, why? Have you ever heard her mention any threats or arguments? Anyone that might have got it in for her? No, of course not. The only person she ever had fights with was Mark, Mr Wilde. They used to slag each other off on the phone, you know. What are the arguments about? Jamie. They're both trying to get custody. Only Mr Wilde doesn't stand a chance. Not unless... Unless? Something happens to Rebecca. I wasn't even there. Why do you need me to go down to Sun Hill? We need to confirm that you gave Keegan the £2,000 we found on him when he was arrested. I've already told you I gave it to him, man. Why? Yeah, but we need it in writing. We have to take a formal statement. A statement? That's right. How much you gave him, when you gave it to him, and when you last saw him. And then we can let Mr Keegan go. I gave him £2,000 yesterday. I haven't seen him since. I don't see why I have to trail all the way down to Sunhill just to tell you that. That's funny. I've just spoken to one of the brickies outside. He says Keegan was here at lunchtime. Turned up in a white Vauxhall Astra. Spent half an hour in here with you and then left. Less than an hour later, Susan Webster was knocked down outside the nursery. I'm arresting you for conspiracy to commit murder. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. It's not what you think. Sister said you wanted to see me? Yeah, sorry. I think I might have done something a bit stupid. After you left, Carl and Terry came back to sit with me. They wanted to know what we'd been talking about. And you told them? Yeah. Did you mention Mark Wilde? Yeah, I just didn't think. So why lie? Why say so you haven't seen Keegan since yesterday when you saw him this afternoon? Because I knew it looked suspicious. <laughs> I give him £2,000 at lunchtime, then a couple of hours later he knocks down my wife. But he didn't knock down your wife. He knocked down Susan Webster. No, but that's what you think he was trying to do. Knock down my wife. Now, why would he want to do that? I don't know. You're the one saying that's what he was trying to do, not me. So how did you meet Keegan? He came to the site. He runs a company that specialises in site security. A protection racket. It's a legitimate company. Keegan can't run a bath, let alone a legitimate company. 
So is that what happened, Mark? Keegan was putting the squeeze on you and you thought you saw an opportunity to make him earn his money? No. Or perhaps you just thought he was going to threaten Rebecca or, or maybe scare her? No. I hired him as security for the site, that's all. Maybe it was his idea. He could see you and Rebecca were having your problems and he offered to help. You can't keep me here like this when I haven't done anything. I want to see a solicitor. Matthew, how's it going? Bad as that, is it? He's going to walk, not enough evidence. The only way we'll nail him is one makes a statement against the other. And they can't do that without dropping themselves, innit? Keegan knows that it's keeping Storm and Wiles brief gets here, he'll know it too. Only half decent brief a time to keep his mouth shut. Well, shouldn't worry about it too much. It's only a matter of time before Keegan's banged up for someone else. And in the meantime, Mark, it's waste got free. Mm. Win some, you lose some. Sarge, Tony's just called from St Hugh's. He's had another word with Susan Webster. Yeah? Well, her brothers are giving her the third degree. They know that we're questioning Mark Wilde about the RTA. Tony thought you might want to warn Wilde and Keegan, just in case. Right. What time did he arrive? Well, come on, Mark. You spoke to us earlier. Yeah. And now you just keep asking me the same questions over and over again. If my client's already answered the questions you've put to him, there's little point in him repeating himself. That's it. I've had enough. Not saying anything else. Interview terminated, 1900. PC Garfield show you down to Custody and arrange for your release. Hope you're doing the right thing. What do you mean? What happened to Susan Webster was supposed to look like an accident. If we hadn't caught Keegan dumping the car, that's exactly how it would have been treated. We'd have been none the wiser. But because we can't prove it doesn't mean to say we don't think it was deliberate. And we're not the only ones. Susan Webster's family doesn't think it was an accident either. That sounds like a threat. No. It's a warning. The Websters aren't the sort of family to forgive and forget. You're being bailed to appear at Sunhill Magistrates Court one week tomorrow. You sign there, please. And you're free to go. PC Jarvis, we'll see you out. This way. No. Mark Wild, Sarge, there's not enough to charge him. We'll have to release him when you're ready. Cheers. Okay, Mr. Wild, mind how you go. Uh, husband? Yeah. Talk about getting away with murder. Sierra Oscar from 79 receiving. You all right? Uh, what was on the pavement? Drive straight at me. Attention requested to a yellow Ford Escort heading West Ham Malham Street. Part index Delta 150. Occupant IC1 male driving recklessly. Driving recklessly? Received. He was deliberately trying to whip me. Well, we don't know that. You know who it was. I've got a pretty good idea. It was one of her brothers. You saw him, did you? No, nah, it's obvious. What am I supposed to do now? There's some maniac out there trying to knock me down. I'd try looking both ways before crossing the road if I were you. Yeah, I ain't got eyes in the back of my head. Pity, because you're going to need them.